Hi, this is Anna, and this is Check It at the Round Table, where we discuss movies, books, music, and stuff. Today, peeps, we are discussing Bad Buddy, the series. This series is a new Thai BL drama series. It was released 20... 21 to 2022 season it ran for 12 weeks 12 episodes what did we think of this series that we have literally as fans been waiting since the preview was released in 2020 for it because of covid this series this series stars the actors om and the nom this series is bloody awesome if you haven't seen it yet May I highly recommend that you stop this podcast right now and click the link in the description because you don't need this podcast. What you need is to go watch Bad Buddy. If you have watched Bad Buddy, this series, I think the main thing about it is it is up there with Amwa. I don't say that about most series, but if you if you're familiar with Thai drama, you're definitely familiar with Until We Meet Again or Amwa. It's kind of the series that came out in 2019 with, oh, sorry, I can't remember the name of the actors. They're delightful people in real life, but I can't think of their names right now. But anyway, the two lead actors in that are very, very famous in Thailand. But that series kind of broke the mold, I think, for Thai BL dramas. Because I sat down and watched that and I went, this is why Anna likes BL drama because it really has nothing to do with the fact that they're BL, except for the fact that I don't have to sit down and watch Gender Wars. Yay. But other than that, I think that Bad Buddy is right there next to Amwa for quality of production, for making you think about life a little differently than when you started the drama. Also, it's one of those series is that I don't know about the rest of you peeps, but I look forward to every Friday sitting there for the premiere. I mean, that was kind of like, that was a highlight of the week. I mean, oh, my face just disappeared. That's freaky. Okay, I'm not sure how I feel about these backgrounds. But anyway, we'll, we'll think about that later. Anyway, so this series is about Pat and Pran, two boys that have been pitted against one another since before they were born because Pat's father and Pran's mother did not get along. As the series progresses, you find out that the boys were actually separated in high school because they happened to be in a musical production together. Their parents didn't like that Pat was playing drums and Pran was playing guitar on the same stage, God forbid. So they pulled Pran out of school and shipped him off to a boarding school. Pran is a very... I think the thing I think is interesting about his character is he is demisexual, which means that I found out that word this year. I've learned a new word. But anyway, I don't mean a word. We don't, where I came from, we really didn't have a great study in certain words. But anyway, demisexual, it means that you are really only attracted to one person at a time, that you will not ever cheat on anyone because that's just not something that's in your makeup. I mean, I don't know how to explain it except to say that think Sheldon Cooper from the Big Bang Theory. Sheldon is going to like Amy Furrer Fowler. He's not going to sit there and go, you know, I think I'll go have an affair with the chemist down the hall. That would not even enter Sheldon's mind because he's sitting there going, Amy is my girlfriend. And then Amy is my wife. That's kind of it. And in the same way, Pran is demisexual. Pran does not date. Pran does not, I don't think, yeah, I'm going, the only person Pran has ever liked was Pat, but he never acted like he liked Pat in his life because of the trouble between the two families. And you kind of get a hint of that um, in the first and second episodes, because the thing I thought was interesting as a first time viewer of this series, and even the second time around after you kind of know the story more, is the fact that Pran doesn't just hate Pat's guts. I mean, no offense, but he has no reason to really like Pat given their family history. But the fact that he can chat with him without, you know, getting upset, as a viewer, it's kind of odd when you first see it, you're going, why is he okay with Pat? Now, Pat, I think the thing that I like most about him as a character is 
he is way more mature than you would think, especially as the series progresses. I think the strength of Pat is in the fact that he can be jovial and laugh and make other people lighten up, but he also knows full well how grave a situation might be. And I think that's kind of his strength in the fact that he does have a good grasp on reality, but he also sits there and goes, if I can make someone else laugh, I'm probably going to do that because they might need it. And so you have Pat over here who, he's kind of a Hanyan. When you first meet him, you go, he's kind of a jock and he's not very nice person. I don't mean it bad, but he does have a sense of honor because like in a big fight that this whole series opens up with, he sits there and goes, okay, we're not going to fight you by yourself because that is not fair. So you call your buddies. So we have an equal a point. You know, I'm not into physical fights at all. I think that's a very stupid idea. But if you are in a school fight, you should never gang up five to one on a person. I'm going, that is just dishonorable in I don't know if it's my Celtic origins, but I don't know. I'm just sitting there going, my ancestors sometimes pop their head up and go, no. And so when that happened, I was like, you know, Pat, he does have some very big foibles. Um, he's very untidy. He does not bathe regularly. That is a very bad decision. I'm like, I love the second episode when you see them get ready for their day. And Pran is like, he gets up early, he makes his bed, he gets his clothes, he quietly and symphonically with music, you know, gets his breakfast perfectly cut and everything in order. Pran Pat wakes up with his dong doll because he still, you know, got his childhood toy from like when he was, you know, eight. and I totally get, I'm like, you know, I have a box of buddies that I'm not getting rid of. I mean, they sit right by my bed because I like fluffy things. And sometimes I just go and go, these are for the kitties, yes, but these are also for their din mom. On stressful days, I can grab a bunny or, you know, I don't know, I have these by my desk. It's like, they're kind of therapeutic. So anyway, I'm like, we all have our thing. But anyway, Pat has this long doll that he wakes up with like 15 minutes before he's supposed to go to class. He doesn't take time to shower, just coats himself in some kind of, I don't know, I'm thinking acts like body spray. I'm going, they can smell him a mile off and it's not comforting. A pair of pants that he had slipped on the ground because, you know, we don't have time to fold something and put it on a chair or in a dresser and doesn't grab any food before he goes to college. So you basically have polar opposites when it comes to behavioral patterns but in the same way I think that is why it is so funny to watch the two interact because even though they are so very very different in their personal development of human behavior they do both have both Pat and Pran I think the thing that you notice right off the bat is they're very good kids I mean and I mean that in a good way I know that the characters are like 20 in the story but still they're they're kids so anyway but they're very good kids. They try their very best to please their family. They try their very best to do well at school. They're not, you know, being overly yahooish. Their friends are totally yahooish. But as individuals themselves, they're not, they're very steady characters. And as the story develops, the main reason that Pat and Pram become friends is because they do have that camaraderie. They both know what it's like to live in conflict. And the thing that they decide to do, because both of them are dealing with the fact that their faculties are arguing with one another in these really big brawls, is they decide to kind of team up with text messaging and keep each other and their teams or faculties away from one another. So if one's at the curry restaurant, the other doesn't go to the curry restaurant. And so that's basically how their relationship starts is because they're trying to keep everyone from fighting, which I think is kind of interesting because both Pat and Pran grew up in an emotional fireball of conflict. I mean, their parents were fighting constantly. I understand from the book that it's even more like physically volatile with um, Pat and Pran and their parents, like physical abuse kind of thing. I have not read the book. I don't read 
BL books. It's not really on his thing. No offense. I mean, you can check out my What the BL podcast I did about two years ago. Explains that I'm just not really into manga and I'm not really into Thai translated BLs because they're translated horribly and usually not G-rated. So anyway, haven't read the book, but from what I understand from the threads, the book was far more violent in the physical animosity between the parents than the movie. I mean, in the parents, they're upset with one another. In the book, I think they actually get physically volatile with themselves and the kids. So really, really bad situation that Pat and Pran grew up in, whether you were talking about the movie or the book. But I think because of that, both Pat and Pran are trying to keep everyone calm, whether you're talking about pleasing their parents, keeping the kids from fighting at school, And that's kind of where they build their camaraderie, if you will. The next step is Pran gets a package of food one night that he orders. And he thinks, oh, I got a free salad with my food. So he's eating his chicken and having his salad and going, oh, that's really nice. I didn't know the restaurant had this food. So um, he, and I don't know why my face keeps moving. I think it's because I'm wiggling. Oh, wait. Anyway, my face normally is not chopped off and it's like a weird face. But anyway, it's doing that today. I don't know how to fix it. Kind of helps. Okay, could be because there's a curtain behind me that's giving me trouble. I'm going to stop this recording for a minute and try to remove the half face issue I'm dealing with right now. <laughs> so here. Okay, peeps, I am back and my face is fully here. <laughs> I have a large window behind me that you can't see because of the black screen, green screen, whatever background thing. And it was causing my face to look like I had a piece chopped out of it, which no, there has been no ax man in my house. So anyway, moving on. So Pran gets this free salad and he's going, this is nice, I like this. And he's having that with his fried chicken. And then he gets a ding from the delivery guy who says, I am so sorry, but I left someone else's food at your house and your food got taken to the house next door, the dorm next door. And and Pran's like, oh, okay. And so Pran, being the thoughtful person that he is, puts like three beverages into a little baggie and puts a little, I apologize, I didn't realize that I had eaten your salad on the little sticky note that has a little smiley face and takes it over the hall and puts it on the door. He doesn't knock on there because he's like, it's late, I don't want to bother them. And so that's what Pran does. And the next morning, Pat or Pat opens the door and gets the beverages and goes, oh, there's a girl, she likes me. She gave me healthy drinks, oh. And she lives right across the hall and look at her handwriting. And you're sitting there going, you know, I'm kind of surprised that you've gotten her hair color, the shape of herself and you know, that she's female, all by her handwriting on the sticky notes, I mean, and her beverage choice. I'm like, you have no idea if that's a guy or a girl that left you food. And just because they leave you drinks because they happen to eat your salad does not mean that they want to be passionately involved with you. So I'm like, that was very, very funny. And his Pat sister says as she comes over and her brother's doing sit-ups because he's trying to look more healthy for the girl next door. His sister goes, are all men as delusional as you to think that because she left you beverages and a sticky note with nice handwriting, it's a girl and she wants to date you? And he says, don't you see she's healthy like me and I'm sure she likes me. So Pat, thinking it's a girl, puts on a sticky note, something like, oh, basically, and takes it over with some treats to Pran's door. And Pran comes back from school the next day, and he sees the treats on these doors, and he's going, there's a girl leaving me food simply because I gave her drinks for the salad. And, you know, I don't remember, but Pran is going, I think the issue is, is Pran does not think, you know, a guy would be flirting with him. So he's like, I don't see why the girl is leaving me notes. This is kind of weird. And dumplings, it's just kind of strange. So she, he goes and talks with his friends about this. And his, his friends are all laughing because Pran does not date. He's not really romantically inclined. And, and they're all sitting there going, this is kind of funny that Pran's getting someone who's leaving him treats at the door. And at the same time, you see outside, Pat is being very jovial, saying, oh, there's a beautiful woman across the hall for me. Which is 
kind of humorous when you think about it. So anyway, this back and forth continues for a little bit and Pat decides that he's going to be oh so suave and he takes another bag of treats to Pran's door one night and says, the moon will be beautiful tomorrow night. Would you like to go see it with me on the rooftop? And by this time, Pran is a little um, perturbed. And he also sees that in Thai, the Thai language, you have a certain kind of pronoun you use at the end of a word, ka for, um, um, okay, let me think of this here, just a moment. Pom for I for if you're a guy, Chan if you're a girl and you say I. Then we have Kswadi Ka for Ka is the end one if you're female and Cub, I believe, if you're male. Well, anyway, this last note about going to look at the moon is written with a Cub instead of a Ka. And that kind of throws Pren off a little bit. He's like, you know, um, I'm really not okay with anyone hitting on me. And now I'm really a little worried about the person next door because they're a guy. I've never dated a guy. I really have, you know, I, I'm not planning on dating anyone, but this is just a little disturbing. So anyway, Pran takes the note to his friends and he's like, I'm not really sure what to do with this or the treats. I'm just really confused. And so his friends say, well, you haven't met the person. So maybe you should go meet them to see who they are before you make a rapid judgment. And you know, I think it's kind of interesting because in in most dramas that are Western, the person would just say, oh, they're a guy. I'm not going to go meet them because, okay, they're a guy. Whereas in this drama, I think it's because of the Thai culture in general. They're sitting there going, I think you should meet the person before you say you won't talk to them because you don't know who they are. And I'm like, we wouldn't be having this conversation in a Western drama. And I think it's very interesting because you don't know the person before you meet them. So before you make a rapid judgment on anyone, and before you also just sit there and go, I don't want anything to do with this person because you don't even know if they are really trying to make a pass at you, or maybe they're just being friendly. In this case, you can definitely tell Pat's making a pass, but he's making a pass on someone he does not mean to be making a pass on. So anyway, Pran's friends say, go meet the person because you're going to be curious about who it is anyway, and you're living right across the hall from them, so you might as well know who it is. And if you do decide you don't want to be with them, then have the courtesy to say that to them to their face instead of just leaving them a note because you're freaked out about the repercussions. I think that's really a good litmus test for Pran anyway, because Pran is terribly terrified of repercussions because of what happened in high school when he was dragged out because he was playing in a band with Pat. So he has lived in complete fear of repercussions ever since. He doesn't play the guitar because of repercussions with his mother with playing the guitar. He doesn't do a lot of things because of the repercussions that could happen. And I think that's what makes his character most understandable to me because I remember as a kid, it wasn't really what happened that was so worrying, but what could happen and the repercussions that you could face that were bloody terrifying sometimes because of the situation growing up. I mean, no offense. It's like it wasn't a pleasant situation, but I'm like, I totally get Pran's character in looking at life and going, what are the things that could go wrong? And how do I mitigate it for myself, for my family, for my friends to keep everyone as safe as possible? Which Honestly, in this life, you can't keep everyone safe. You can love them to the best of your ability, but it's not up to you to keep everyone safe. You don't have that ability. You're not, you know, some supreme being. So anyway, poor Pran is sitting here. He's going, you know, I'm going to have the courage to go tell them I don't want to date them, but I am going to go meet them. And so his friend said, yeah, go meet them, go see what they're like. And you know, also one of the friends said, he said, maybe they're a girl who is using a male pronoun at the end of the sentence to throw you off and to see what you would do with that. And he's going, that would be a weird girl. And I said, well, it's possible. It's a girl who's using the wrong pronoun at the end of the sentence. And so Pran at nine o'clock goes to the rooftop <laughs> to meet the X character, we will call them. And he goes up and Pat is on the rooftop and he's going, why is Pat on the rooftop? And Pat is there and this, this lady comes out and, and he says, oh, isn't the moon beautiful? And Pratt's sitting there going, you have got to be kidding me that Pat 
is not only living in my dorm, but he's the one across the street and he thinks this girl is the one living in my flat. So Pat Pran is sitting there trying not to laugh and kind of amused by this whole situation going, Pat is so, so silly with this whole thing. He has no idea what's going on. And then it gets worse because Pran is sitting there to the side, kind of watching Pat with this girl who is talking to her boyfriend on the phone or girlfriend, I don't know who. And she says, honey, there's this guy on the roof. I'm not sure. And, and, and Pat says, um, are you by chance the woman in room such and such? And she goes, no, I'm not the girl in room such and such. And she kind of, you know, goes around Pat and, you know, goes to look at the stars by herself with her cell phone and whoever's on the other side of the line. And so Pat is waiting there with a bag of treats. <laughs> I think he was a dog in a past life. But anyway, he's sitting there going, you know, the girl from room such and such is going to come up and be this beautiful blonde woman with quite a nice silhouette. And um, Pran is sitting there just trying not to lose it because he's watching Pat and going, he doesn't have a clue. And so he says, um, the person in room such and such is uh, me. Do you still want to look at the moon? And um, Pran, Pat goes, but the, the handwriting was so nice. And Pran goes, well, I should have figured it was you who wrote the note back to me because your handwriting has always been atrocious. So I should have known why it looked familiar. So anyway, um, Pat decides he does not want to look at the moon with Pran. And he goes down and gives the treats though and says, here, you just take the treats. And so the woman is there with her cell phone and her headset, and she's got this bag of treats. She says, honey, this guy just gave me a bag of treats. I don't think he was flirting with me. I just don't think he's all okay. And that is how they start out their relationship in the um, flat. Things get a little troubled because why and the boys decide to fight. This causes the bus stop to be beaten up and destroyed because they were all idiots and Pat and Pran were not with them when they decided to start the fight in the middle of the night in front of a CCT camera on campus. I'm like, you know, the boys in engineering and in architecture, you'd think they'd be smarter than that, but I don't know, throw in a few alcoholic beverages and I think it cost them brain matter. But anyway, they're on the verge of being suspended. Um, Pat is upset because he knows that this could cost um, Pran because Pran and his family are helping to cover the cost of the bus stop. Pran is trying to figure out how to pay for everything with their limited budget between all the boys. So um, Pat decides that because this is in part his fault, because he was at a pub making fun of why with his friends, which really ticked Pat off when he found out. He said, you know, my friends would not have beaten up your friends at the bus stop if your friends had not released on social media a video of them mocking and throwing things onto the floor in a pub that Y had to pick up because they were being jerks. And you were there and you were laughing. And he says, you know, you look pretty happy in that video. And if you really do have a problem with your fins writing, then you shouldn't have done that. And you shouldn't have let them post that video, which caused this trouble in the first place, or at least egg the fire on. And so Pat decides that he did make a mistake. He shouldn't have been laughing on that video. And he comes with Pran to an architectural firm by surprising him. And he basically, when Pran presents a argument for them to sponsor his project at school so they can rebuild the bus stop for a more reasonable fee. They say no. But then Pat decides that's why he came. He said, I want to propose something that my colleague has not mentioned yet. And Pran's like, we didn't even talk. You weren't even supposed to be here. What are you doing here? And so Pat then says, we're going to use some renewable materials. We're going to incorporate this and this. And then would you consider sponsoring this? And he gets them to give Pran's project some money so that they can move forward with it. It's at this point that Pat and Pran start getting along a little better. They start working together on the project and also just hanging out as kind of friends and getting to know one another 
because they're working on the project. They also kind of help get the project moving because like the architecture students will put in something and then they will basically put, is this the best the engineering students can do? And then the engineering students will come and go, and Pat will go, oh, look, they think that we can't finish this in time because the engineering students and Pat are really not very motivated. I mean, if Pat can go to a live concert instead of fixing the bus stop, unfortunately he goes to the live concert. So they finally get the bus stop fixed. Also during this time, there is a freshie music competition. Freshie is the word they use in Thailand for freshmen students. And there will be a freshman music concert where the architecture students play a song and the engineering students play a song. Pran decides to play the song that he wrote with Pat about just a friend, but maybe more than just a friend, which at that point in time, Pat and Pran were not in any type of relationship. Up, actually, up until this point, Pat is not even in the slightest interested in Pran, he just likes visiting with him and competing with him. Pran, I think, has always liked Pat since he was a kid. I'm really not sure why. I think it has something to do with the fact that when he saved Pa, there was a scene in the series where Pa was drowning and Pran went and saved her. And after that, Pat came and basically said, if you ever need a favor, you have it for me, even though our families hate each other terribly, because you saved Pa, so I owe you one. So just remember that, Pat, Pran. And that was when they were like seven, eight years old. And I think it's because of that that Pran has always liked Pat, because of that kind of honor that Pat has, despite his upbringing. Also, I think Pat kind of admires, or Pran kind of admires how Pat can be more jovial. And when there's a problem, he doesn't sit there and go, oh my, what if it all goes to hell? I think one of the funniest scenes is when they're working on the bus stop, there's a scene where they're both flopped on the um, concrete looking at the stars. Oh, they finally looked at the stars together. But anyway, not in a romantic way, but um, Pran looks over at Pat and Pat looks over at Pran and Pran says, what are you looking at? What the hell are you looking at? And Pran and Pat says, I'm looking at the hell, exactly. But I think that that kind of camaraderie, that lightheartedness is what Pat really liked about, I'm sorry, Pran really liked about Pat. I always get the names confused. I'm sorry, it's PMP. It's really hard for me. But anyway, I think that camaraderie that they built together over time is what Pat really, Pran really liked. He liked the lightheartedness. He liked that even though Pat had issues to deal with, he took it more lightly than Pran did, where Pran would sit there and go, oh my God, all hell could break loose. Pat would sit there and go, oh my God, all hell might break loose, but you know what? We're gonna find a way to find this funny. We're gonna to try to find this a little lighthearted. And it doesn't mean that we're denying reality, but we are going to enjoy life while we're here. And I think that's kind of the, the happy puppiness of Pat is what Pran was just like, I find this adorable, but I'm never going to admit that I find this adorable. And so you kind of have that camaraderie, but when the fresh music contest happens, Pat is sitting there, he's, he's told Ink, who was a childhood high school friend of his, that he always liked her in high school, but he never wanted to tell her that he liked her because he didn't want to lose a friend. Well, Ink was friends with both Pat, and she was also friends with Pran, and she gave both of them matching bracelets that said P when they were kids. And Pran, um, pa, uh, Ink, Ink, is her name. Ink is awesome, by the way. But Ink looks at Pat and she says, you know what, Pat? She said, I think, she said, you needed to tell me that to get it off your chest. But she said, I don't really think you like me the way that you think you like me. I think you said that basically because you needed to admit that you at one point thought you liked me. But she said, I don't think if you truly like someone, it's not going to be the way that you said it. It's going to be you know, it's not like you're confessing something. It's like, it's just something that you basically know. So she said, and besides, she said, I have a lot of friends who are far more wonderful than you if I was going to date. And so I would not date you even if you did like me. But the fact is, I don't think you do. So you need to kind of figure out what's going on with you. And 
maybe work on that. And I think that's one thing that I like really a lot about Ink because she sits there and kind of looks at things with a broad view and goes, you know, I'm observing this and I'm gonna tell you what I'm observing. Kind of like the older sister in a way, I think is what I think of her kind of with Pat and Pran. And at the same time, she had a conversation with Pran a while before and she could tell he was troubled about something and she gave him the bracelet that matched Pat's um, at college. He had left before she was able to give it to him in high school. And she says, that looks just like Pat's bracelet that you gave him. And she said, well, I made you one too. And he says, ah, oh, okay. And she said, is there something bothering you, Pran, that you need to talk to me about? And he says, well, do you like Pat? And she's like, yes, I like Pat, but I also like you. I like you both as friends. And I think it's during that conversation that you can kind of tell that Ink has kind of always known that Pran maybe liked Pat. I don't know. I'm just saying it's kind of maybe a little bit hinted at. But anyway, we also have a scene where Pat gets locked out of his apartment and he ends up spending the night at Pran's apartment under duress. Pran did not want him staying there. He's like, you're sweaty, you smell, you stink, you have terrible hygiene habits. I really don't want you in my house. But you know, if you behave yourself, you can sleep on the floor with a pillow away from me, basically. <laughs> and so he stays the night at Pran's house. And as he's staying there, he's going, I think I like ink, but do you think that she'd like me as a person? I mean, I have some very good qualities and, and poor Pat, he's listing out all what he thinks are his good qualities. And Pran is sitting there listening to it. And um, Pat finally gets up and kind of sits up on his little cot and goes, do, do you think you'd like me if, if you were ink? And Pran looks at him like, you know, I have liked you for years and I've never been able to say anything because my family would, you know, give me hell and you don't like me that way at all. And I hate you. <laughs> so he basically turns to Pat and says, I hate you. I would hate you. That would, that would be what I would think. Pat. And so Pat sits back down and he goes, well, I think I'm quite nice in some respects. <laughs> and then Pran is sitting there kind of just I don't know, containing the emotional angst that he has fought for years. And at the end of the day, he had given um, Pat part of the blanket from his bed, kind of thrown over the side because Pat had forgotten Nong Doll, which is a very big problem for him if he does not have. And at the end of the day, Pran is sitting there going, you know, I let him sleep in my house, but I've just had it up to here with him. And he yanks the blanket back and lets Pat just be cold that night. So anyway, that's kind of what has led up to the Freshie Music Contest, where Pat has told Ink that he likes her. Ink has said, I think you really need to reevaluate this, Pat, because I think there's something more going on that you need to process. I don't know what it is, but think about it. And anyway, as he's watching Pran perform his piece, which was the Just Friend, he's with Pran is with Y playing this song. And it really bothers Pat. He's like, I, I am upset that. Pran and Y are together playing this song. And that night, Pat drinks way too much and he's waiting on the steps when Pran gets home from the contest with Y and he starts fighting Y. Pran gets between them. Pran is pretty drunk at this point too. And Pat and Pran kind of get into a little altercation and he says, you shouldn't sing that song. And our, da, 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 da. Why, you want me to tell him who the friend was who helped you write that song? And, and Pat, Pran is like, Pat, do you really want to do this with Y? Because Y is going to fight you. You are going to fight Y. We have spent a lot of time trying to resolve things. You're drunk. This isn't a good plan. Pran's drunk too. So he's like, you know, just calm down. At the end of the day, um, Pat, Pran goes to his apartment. Pat is on the steps. He had bought a replacement um, rose jelly for the bread that he had used of Pran's when he had spent the night over. And he goes up to his apartment and kind of takes a shower to just calm himself down. It's not like, how does this? It's not like the romantic shower scene. He's just trying to cool his head and just think properly. I mean, I mean, it was like 
sometimes when people have sent, they really do need to just go take a shower and calm down. But anyway, Pat takes a shower, calms down, goes up to the roof to kind of take a breather. Um, Pran is up on the roof too. And Pat and Pran kind of have a little conversation. And Pat says, Pran, I don't like it when you sing that song with someone else. And Pran goes, Pat, I don't see why you're so upset about the song. We aren't even friends. We don't, you know, have that camaraderie because of our familial situation. So why are you upset about the song when it's really nothing to be upset about? What, what is going on here? And Pran is being, I think Pran is being very, he's a little hacked, you can tell, because he's like, why did Pat beat up? Why? It makes no sense. I think at this point, Pat, Pran is just like, I don't get what's going on with Pat. Uh, it, it doesn't follow logic. I can't figure out where he's coming from. So he's like, I don't understand why you're so upset, Pat. We're not even friends. Do you want to be friends? I'm trying to figure this out because he's like, I just honestly don't get it. And I really don't want you to, you know, be lashing out at people in a drunken state. And Pat goes, no, I don't want to be friends. And then he just kisses Pran. And Pran is kind of like, okay. And then Pran is like, I don't know if it was all those years of emotional repression and the fact that he did care about Pat since he was like about seven, but he passionately kisses um, Pat back. At the end of that, Pran is totally freaked out. He is crying and he just leaves. He goes to his room. Pat, Pat is like, oh, I found someone who I like. I think I know what he was talking about. And he's smiling, but then he realizes, oh, shoot. Pran is having a meltdown right now because he's not sure what to do with his emotions with this. And I need to go take care of this. So that's kind of how that whole situation concludes. We then go to Pran completely avoids talking to Pat. He will not answer the door for him at the dorm. He will not talk to him at school. He is just cutting all contact because I think honestly, Pran is like, I really didn't think that I would kiss someone back. And I am totally panicking because I know what a relationship with Pat would mean. And I don't think it has anything to do with the fact that they are of the same gender. I think it has everything to do with the fact that Pran knows that his mother hates Pat's dad and their relationship would end in a disaster by all logical progressions. And he's like, I don't want that to happen. I don't want, you know, disaster to strike. So Pat continues to try to sort this out. I think the main thing is Pat's like, okay, we might not end up dating, but I still want to know why on earth Pat Pran was so emotionally um, romantical, if you will, with me on the rooftop. I mean, it's one thing to kiss someone, it's another thing for them to kiss you back very passionately. So Pat is like, I'm going to get to the bottom of this. We're going to sort this out. We're going to discuss it. We're not going to just, you know, leave this silent. Even if we go our separate ways, we're going to figure out what's going on between us. And so at the end of the day, Pat decides to go on the architecture camp for summer. And he goes on the class bus. Everyone hates him because he's from engineering. And Pran is sitting there going, I can't believe he came on the architecture camp. And Pat is like, you know what? The happy puppy is going to stay until I find out what is really going on. So for about two days, Pran avoids or attempts to avoid Pat. He really is quite clingy. I mean, no offense, not in a romantic way, like in the the dog that follows someone around until they acknowledge them kind of way. So anyway, he's kind of following Pran around, trying to get him to, you know, say something. At the end of the day, one night, um, Pran says, you know, do you think this is easy for me, what we're going through? And Pran says, well, can we at least talk about what's going on? He says, there is nothing to talk about. But everything that you're dealing with, I am trying to deal with too. So can we just not talk about this? And Pat's like, 
you know, that's probably not the best way to um, deal with emotional stuff. Repression is never a good idea. I'm not sure that expression as much as Pat, something may be between the two. But anyway, so at the end of the day, he ends up going with Pran to kind of, he has a day where he goes with Uncle Tong and his nephew to the town. And he, Pran happens to be going to, he goes, and Pran kind of loosens up just a little bit. He kind of calms down because he's not with the architecture group who he has to pretend to not like Pat because he's in engineering. And he can just kind of be himself a little more. And it's at this point that they end up going to the beach and just kind of swimming, having fun. And at the end of that, Pat says, you know, have you ever thought about what life would be like if our parents didn't fight? And, he, and basically, Princess, well, that would be very different. And he says, I want to thank you, Pran, because you did save Pa years ago. And I haven't forgotten that you did that. And he said, also, I want you to think about just for a little bit, if we take everyone out of the mix, which is really hard for you to do, Pran, and it's just you and me. Okay, if we just, you know, remove everyone else, not that we're saying, you know, our lives are more important than them in any way, but we're basically taking and going, it's you and me on the beach. We're just sitting here contemplating life. What would that be like, basically? And so they just kind of sit there and have that moment. They don't really come to any great um, conclusion or effective decision at all, but they do have that moment where I think Pat basically helps Pran have a moment to breathe and think about what's going on. And the other thing I really like about this BL is we're not really having any whole powers is. We're not having a big discussion on, oh my goodness, Pran likes guys. Oh my goodness, Pat likes guys. They didn't realize this. <laughs> We're not having that conversation, which I really, really appreciate. And I had to pause this for just a moment. I'm sorry, I had a work message coming I had to take care of. Okay, moving on. <laughs> but we don't have the conversation of some BLs where they're sitting there going, ah, but, um, But anyway, so Pat and Pran have that moment where they just kind of sit and Pat helps Pran maybe reevaluate things differently because up until this point, I think the main thing that Pran is doing is he's sitting there going, oh my God, everyone in my family, everyone in Pat's family, everyone at school, it's all too much. I can't concentrate on this at all. We have to just shove it in the corner and not deal with the unmentionable um, issue at all. And so that's kind of what I think Pat really helps Pran to kind of breathe easier in a way. It's not that Pran breathes completely easy, but he puts him, he helps him process things. I think it's kind of like when Bob lived with me. I mean, no offense. I am like kind of a nicer version of Sheldon, I mean, if you will. Um, sometimes on my bad days, I'm like, well, you know. I don't know. But anyway, but it's like Bob would come in and I would be dealing with a problem. I go, oh, this problem is very massive. And she would go, yeah, Gigi, that problem is extremely massive. You are totally correct. But for a moment, let's take that problem and move it here. And then let's take all the components of that problem and slip them here. If we do that, it's not really quite as insurmountable and it is fixable. And then she would come up with this idea and I go, you know, if I didn't think things could maybe end in utter failure, if I screwed this up, I would have been so much more able to see it the way Bob did. And by having Bob in my life, like I did for 21 years, I mean, that was like a huge blessing. The thing that it helped me to realize is it helped me to take things a little more calmly than I would have. I mean, I think the one thing that's funny is when my friends talk about talk to me, they say, Anna, you're so calm even though, you know, there might be a lot of stressful things going on, I'm going, I probably wouldn't be so calm if I hadn't had Bob in my life saying, what if it does all go to par on? It'll still be okay. And having Pat in Pran's life, I think 
that is probably one of the most valuable assets he brought into Pran's life was the fact that he could sit there and go, Pran, let's not think of how this all could end in utter failure at this point in time. Let's just think about you and me sitting on the beach. This is calm, isn't it? <laughs> and at the end of the day, they go back to camp. Um, Pran is finding out that his friends are thinking of like six of them ganging up on Pat and beating him up because he is sticking very close to Pran and they can't figure it out. And Pran doesn't want to tell them while well, Pat is trying to figure out what's going on between him and I. Because Pran really doesn't want to cross that bridge with his friends. And I don't blame him one bit about that. That is not the conversation I want to have with those yahoos either. But Pran instead says, well, I had a break up with someone and I'm feeling sad. So you all must drink with me tonight. And so Pran takes them out. They have a few beers. He throws his into the grass. They drink theirs. And at the end of the night, one of the friends says, well, you don't need to feel bad, Pran, if you like somebody and it didn't work out because there's so many other women that you can find more attractive. They have no idea that Pran likes Pat. And they say, I'm sure that we can find you someone that you'd like. And Pran's like, you know, I'm still getting over losing that person. And so I really don't want to consider dating someone else at this point in time. And then once he knows that they are not going to be going and bothering Pat, he goes to the beach and he's looking at some earbuds that Pat gave him at the beach. And he's just kind of opening the can. And he looks over and Pat is sitting there because he was staying at Uncle Tom's, but he decided to come out to the beach. And Pran decides he's going to leave because he doesn't want to be on the beach with Pat and have any discussion about what went on between them on the rooftop. And so he ends up walking away on the beach and Pat just grabs his arm, sits with him on the beach and he goes, okay, you don't want to talk about what happened on the rooftop? I get that. I'm not going to say anything about that, but I'm going to write something in the sand. And maybe you can tell me what you think if I don't say it but I just write it can you maybe tell me what's going on here and so Pat goes you don't need to understand Pran goes you don't need to understand me or why that happened it, it meant nothing and, and Pratt's going that was a lot to not mean anything um Pran I think there was something there I'm not sure what but that was rather passionate for you since you're not a passionate person. And it's kind of like, you know, that was a buildup of something. I'm not sure. So anyway, they have that conversation and Pran goes, Pat goes, I think you like me, but you just don't want to admit you like me. And, and Pran goes, I think you like me and you just don't want to like admit that you like me. And he says, and Pat goes, you know what? I think what we'll do is we'll compete. Whoever falls in love with the other first loses. <laughs> I'm going, that's kind of a losing game when you think about it, but okay, whatever they needed to do to, you know, emotionally handle the situation. So anyway, they agree to compete to see whoever falls in love first loses. <laughs> And then they have a little discussion because um, um, Pat says, well, you know, I'm really not sure what to think of this one person because they, they've they been an, avoiding me this whole time at camp. I think it means that they like me and they just can't emotionally express their feelings. And I saw a crack video on this and it was bloody hilarious because Pran gives Pat a look like the audacity of this human being. And then Prince says, well, I don't know what to think either because someone came all the way from Bangkok to this camp to try to make up with me over this situation. And so by the end of the night, it's not that they're like completely at peace with things, but they're able to laugh about it. I'm going, you know, you can deal with a lot of things if you're able to laugh about it. I'm not talking just about romance. I'm thinking life in general. If you're able to take things a little less seriously, you're going to get a lot further. So anyway, they decide that they are going to try to make the other person fall in love so they will admit defeat. <laughs> I think this is one of the most comedic parts of this series because the things that Pat thinks Pran will fall madly in love with him for I'm sitting there going, this is why honor really doesn't date because the things that people think are romantic, I end up sitting there and laughing and falling off the couch because I'm going, that is many things 
but that is not romantic. That is like bloody hilarious that you think it's romantic, but that's not really probably going to work. But anyway, Pat thinks that by showing him a picture, Pat, showing Pran a picture of him in his car in the driver's seat and going, love you, baby. <laughs> And what happens is Pran is eating dinner with his family for breakfast, and he's sitting here going, um, I had a friend text me, I'm sorry, he sent me a meme that was very comical. And so anyway, but it's like, that's not romantic, Pat, that's just funny that you think that that's going to, you know, make Pran like you, or by being at soccer practice and taking off your shirt and throwing water on yourself. I mean, no offense, that one I think was one of the most humorous because Pran is rocking by and he's going, you know, Pat, that is not going to make me like you. I mean, you can just see he's going, and he just walks on. But anyway, um, Pran decides that he's going to flirt by um, making up curry and saying that he has always wanted to make up dinner for someone special and as he's getting ready to feed pat um she says don't you like me and pat goes no i don't and i i think you should eat the curry so anyway that's kind of how they decide to flirt with one another if you want to call that that i'm going i'm not sure that's really effective flirting but it was really entertaining for us viewers to see what they thought the other would find you know attractive. But anyway, at the end of the day, they do become a couple. They do date. Um, their dates consist of eating dinner on the roof of the dorm because they don't want their friends to see one another or their families to see one another. And there's one scene where Pran is hiding in Pat's car and he's going, you know, I feel like I'm your other lover because we always have to kind of sneak around because you don't want your friends knowing you're dating me. I don't want my friends knowing I'm dating you. It's kind of complex, our relationship. So anyway, at the end of the day, though, the people do find out that they're dating because there is a, they have a bit of an argument. Um, Pran is upset because Pat keeps posting on social media with the hashtag just friend. And Pran knows that they could find out that it's him that Pat is dating. It's not because I think, I don't think either one of the boys is worried that their friends are going to find out that they're gay. That's not the problem. They're worried because their friends will find out that they're dating someone from architecture or vice versa engineering or their parents will find out and cause a bloody fit. So anyway, I think that is why they're worried. It has nothing to do with their sexual orientation of themselves or anything else. So anyway, also while they're dating, they do not ever mess around. It's it's very interesting. I think this, this series because Pat and Pran stay over at one another's houses but they never mess around. They just conk together with Nong Doll, which Anna loved that facet of this series. I mean, episode 11, of course, we have the honeymoon episode, but that's a little different, if you know what I mean. So anyway, I mean, no offense. I'm like, those two, yeah, they had a honeymoon. They can't get married legally in Thailand, so might as well go have a nice time together and then, you know, stay together for life. But anyway, moving on. So, and how do you say this? You can't get married, but you have to get married in Taiwan. I think the US, I'm not sure what countries in Europe allow same-sex couples to be married. I think Taiwan is the only one in Asia. I think Japan's trying to pass that. But anyway, you can't get married legally in Thailand. I do know there are several couples in Thailand that have married, but I think they have gone abroad for that ceremony and then come back to Thailand or had just a ceremony that didn't require legal um, paperwork. But anyway, moving on. This isn't a conversation about same-sex marriages in the world. But anyway, so, but Pat and Pran often, um, Pran often has Pat sleep over because Pa has moved into Pran's dorm. Um, pa does know that Pran is dating um, Pat. Also, Ink knows that Pran is dating Pat because um, when everyone finds out is the curtain gets pulled down when Pat and I have no idea who says I'm just reading the same books. Anyway, but when Pat and Pran are having an argument about the social media, Pat gets really upset and throws the shirt that he's carrying, which is Pran's, to the ground and goes and plays the 
I forgot what the instrument is called. But anyway, goes and plays an instrument on the stage for the architectural play, shirtless. And this, and Pran is really upset. Pat is really upset. Pratt was wearing Pran's shirt because he likes Pran's smell and it makes him feel comfortable. So he's like, I was wearing your shirt because I like it. And Pran's like, you're wearing my shirt. Everyone's going to know you're wearing my shirt, Pat. This could cause you trouble. This could cause me trouble. Do we really want that trouble? And Pat and Pran are kind of having this back and forth banter behind the stage. And then Pat goes out shirtless. And by the end of the, what do you call it? Scene of the play that they're rehearsing. Um, Pran goes behind the stage and he goes and he hands Pat a water and his shirt and he says, I'm sorry. And Pat says, I'm sorry too. He says, I shouldn't have posted on social media basically. And Pran says, you know what? As your boyfriend, I need to realize the fact that you, for you, it's very important to post on social media. And I need to be okay with that if we're going to be a couple because if this is going to bug me, we're not going to be able to survive. And I think that little moment is one of the reasons their relationship works because both of them realize that they are going to have a lot of obstacles. It has nothing really to do with their sexual orientation. It's not going to be the biggest obstacle for their families or their friends. The problem is going to be the fact that they happen to be from basically the other side of the tracks and that is going to cause them difficulty as they go through their lives and their relationship. And if they cannot handle that, they will not be able to survive that relationship. And I think the one thing that was very, very interesting with their relationship as opposed to any other BL I've ever seen is any time they hit any kind of difficulty, they face it together. It doesn't matter what that difficulty is, they're going to deal with it together every single step of the way. And they had a lot of difficulties to surround. But anyway, at the end of the day, when the play is done, um, Pat and Pran are joking with one another behind the stage and they're wrestling. It's not like they're having a romantic makeout session at all. They're just tussling. But anyway, the audio goes out to the, the crew. Everyone can hear what they're saying and the curtain pulls out and you see Pat and Pran. Now, if it had been me watching, I probably would have just assumed they were just horsing around. I mean, I don't see why just because of their actions, people thought they were a couple. I mean, no offense, I'm like, I've seen guys do that my whole life and I never think that they were, you know, madly and passionately in love with one another. I'm just saying. But anyway, the whole school knows Pat and Pran are dating. Um, why and all um, Pran's friends will not talk to him. Why was a terrible human being in that scene? I just want to give a really bad, I don't know what you call an opposite of a shout out, but that goes to why in this scene. And Basically, Pran is trying to deal with the fact that no one's talking to him. Pat is trying to deal with the fact that no one's talking to him, except they are talking to him, but they can't talk to him in the buildings of the school because the architect, the engineering does not like the fact that Pat is dating someone in architecture, but all those friends are like, you know what? You love who you love. We'll just pretend to dislike him when we're at school, but we don't care. So anyway, that's kind of what's going on. We have a scene here where Pat is eating his breakfast away on the soccer field because they will not let him eat at the school um, because he's dating someone from architecture. And so um, Pran comes up and he sits down beside him and Pat says, you know what? We can break up if you want me to on social media. I can post that you broke up with me. So it looks like, you know, you're better than I am. Um, if that will get Y to talk to you, because I know Y is your best friend. I don't want you losing your best friend. I don't want you having a fight with them. Um, if you want me to do that, I can do that. And Pat reaches over to grab his phone and Pran just grabs his hand and puts it down and says, basically, no, we're going to deal with this. And he hands him a tea. And Pat just sits there and goes, oh, okay, we're going to deal with this together. And I don't have to, you know, do this to make, Pran okay with this. And so um, Pat's just kind of sitting there. I love the scene there where he's sitting on the bench going, oh, Pran is willing to fight for this. He thinks it's worth it. And also it's kind of like the scene backstage where um, Pran says, well, you're my boyfriend. I'm going to have to put up with this if I'm with you. It's just going to come with the territory. And Pat's like, oh, you really are my boyfriend now. Okay. <laughs> I'm so glad I upgraded from, you know, the maybe the Voldemort relationship to boyfriend okay this is good so anyway they end up deciding to face this together um the next thing that happens is as the story progresses 
Pat and Pran and Pa and Ink. Pa and Ink become a couple. Um, pa is Pat's sister. She ends up um, dating Ink. And they both Pa, Ink, Pat and Pran get along extremely well. I think this is one of, I've never seen a Thai drama with two girls in it. They're in a relationship. I'm not saying they don't have them. I'm just saying haven't seen that. And I really haven't seen many dramas featuring two girls that it's a healthy relationship kind of thing. I'm sure there are some. I just really don't, I mean, we watch BL drama and there's no girls that like each other. And I don't know why, but anyway. So anyway, but Pa Inc, very cool couple. They're together, um, Pat and Pran together. But as things progress, um, Pat's parents and Pran's parents end up finding out that they are dating. I mean, it was going to happen someday, but it does happen. When that happens, Pran goes home. He gets hit by his mom. Pat goes home. They finally find out why their parents had a fight. It's because Pran's dad told the teacher that he wanted to take Pat's, or Pran's mother had her scholarship taken by Pat's dad because Pat's dad told the teacher that Pran's mom didn't want the scholarship. Now, my point of fact is, is if this was the case, then why didn't Pran's mother march down when she was 18 years old and say, give me back my student scholarship because that guy's a lying dog. I mean, no offense. I'm like, did you really not have any, why have that angst for years? Why not just go down and deal with the problem when it arises? I mean, no one can steal your scholarship unless you let them. But anyway, that's why Pat's mom and Pat's dad and Pran's mom dislike each other. So the parents start fighting. The boys, Pran's been hit. He just leaves the house. Um, Pat's trying to do what he's done. He's going, you know, I have had to dislike Pran my whole life because you didn't do the right thing when you were a kid. And because of that, I have to deal with the fact that I have to pay for your failing. I don't think that's very fair, Dad, that, you know, because you screwed up, I have to hate Pran because you made this mistake and you didn't do the right thing that you should have done. That's just not fair. And so he leaves the house and um, he goes back to the dorm. Pran is up on the roof trying to call Pat and he just completely loses it because Pat comes up to her and, and he, Pran just, he says, you know, I can't take this anymore. I can't handle the fact that, you know, my mom's saying all these terrible things. She hit me. I mean, I just can't deal with this. I don't know what to do, but I cannot do this. And so Pat says, you know what? We're going to go away for a little bit. We're just going to take some time off, go do something else for a little bit. And I think, you know, a lot of people think that leaving the situation is running away. I don't think that's what Pat was really going for. I think what Pat was going for was we cannot survive with our families the way they are right now. It's not going to be healthy for them. It's not going to be healthy for us. Let's just go away and give them a little time to cool down and then we will reassess the situation once that, you know, the dust clears. So they go to the beach to the um, sustainable town on the beach and stay with Uncle Tom. Well, they're with Uncle Tong. They basically, um, they take the SIM cards out of their phones and they have a little session because Pat pretends to throw his into the sea. Um, Pram pretends to so throw his SIM card into the sea. And then they both laugh at each other because they know they were just pretending. And it's basically, um, Pat says, well, this is our honeymoon, Pran. We basically, you know, we're not gonna be able to get married in Thailand, but this is our honeymoon. And we're away from everyone. And we have the beach and the sun and, it's like I said before, it's just you and me on the ocean, okay? <laughs> so anyway, they have time with Uncle Tom, they go fishing, they kind of help out with Junior who's having some trouble going back to Bangkok for school. He wants to stay on the beach. I really can't blame Junior. I mean, if I were Junior, I'd want to too. But anyway, at the end of the day, Uncle Tom says, you know, I realized that you might not be able to change the world. But the reason that I'm here doing what I'm doing is because I might not change the world with my decision to try to help the planet be more sustainable, to have zero waste in this town. But I change myself by doing what I do. 
it doesn't really matter if I change the word because I have no control over that, but I change myself. I think it's like, I can't remember the person who said it, but basically be a good person because then you know there's one less demon in the world. <laughs> well, that, that's kind of a good quote. I, I know they said it much more eloquently than that, but anyway. But basically, Katon says, you know, you might not be able to change the world, but you can change how you react to the world. At the end of the day, um, Pat and Pran have a little bit of a argument on the beach after like a few days because Pran is thinking about calling his mom. He feels really bad that things happened the way they did. And I think Pran feels responsible, although honestly, Pran was not responsible for that incident with his mother. His mother was responsible for the incident with his mother and she really needs to go see a therapist, which we don't see in this film, unfortunately. But anyway, he is thinking about calling his mom. Pat's a little upset because he knows that means that he's probably thinking about leaving Pat there on the beach. And Pat just arranged for them to be able to get some work there so they could stay longer if they want. Um, Pran follows him out, but he kind of marches out of the place upset. Um, and even though they're on the honeymoon, they're not messing around at this point at all either. It's like, you know, they're just cooking, you know, working and fishing and cooking. They can't cook very well. I mean, Pran can cook. There's a hilarious scene when um, Pat is trying to cook with Junior and Pran. And, and Pat says, basically, as he's doing a terrible job cooking, he says, well, it's okay. My, my lover cooks for me and they do a great job. And Junior looks at Pat and goes, I'm very sorry for your lover because you would be terrible in the kitchen. And, and Pat said, it's okay. I help my lover in other ways. So it's it's okay that I can't cook. And Junior says, well, how do you help your lover? Because you really need to make amends for the fact that you can't cook. And Pat is saying, they're going, adopt a serious face, fry the fish, do not laugh and fall into a heap because Pat is being so funny here. So anyway, at the end of the day though, Pran follows Pat and brings um, one of those weed snacks, which they're promoting for the film. <laughs> nice little product placement. It's kind of a nature of Thai dramas. But anyway, they um, sit there on the beach and Pran's like, I have a seaweed snack for you, Pat. And Pat's like, no, the puppy is upset. You were planning to leave me here on our honeymoon. I am very upset. <laughs> and Pran's like, I talked to uncle so-and-so. We can start work. It's perfectly fine. I said, we'd be good with that. And Pat's like, and Pat's like, oh, you did. And he's like, yes. And really, Pat, you should be thankful that you even got me to come here because that was a major step for me to leave behind the dorm and my crazy family and come with you to the beach with my SIM card out of my phone. That is like massive for me, Pat. So I think you really should think about that. And Pat's like, if you're going to bring it up that way, then, you know, just, just go away. And Pran's like, I have seaweed snack. These are like product placement. We need to endorse this here, Pat. <laughs> so anyway, they, they calm down and Pat's like, okay, you really did have me when you offered me the seaweed snack. And so anyway, they have that little discussion along with some things that isn't necessarily G-rated. <laughs> it is funny though, because I'm like, Pran's like, you're such, an, yeah, he's like, you know, you're, yeah. Anyway. But at the end of the day, they have that discussion and Pran says, well, you want to start work tonight? And Pran's like, Pran's like, no, we're not working tonight. We're going out for drinks. And Pran's like, what? And he says, no, we're going out for drinks. It's our honeymoon. We will start work, you know, later, but we're not working tonight. And he's like, okay, we're not working tonight. We'll go out for drinks. And so they go and sit on the rocks by the beach and have a couple of beers, which are blurred out because it is a Thai drama. We can't have the alcohol label showing. I'm not sure why. I'm like, we all know they're drinking beer. We just don't know what brand. It really doesn't keep people from drinking beer to blur the image of that or smoking. I mean, just don't include beer or smoking if we really don't want people to do that. And we think that they're going to because they watched it in a Thai drama, which is kind of weird. But anyway, it's not like I'm going to go buy a Suzuki motorcycle because I watch Bad Buddy or a Pixma Canon printer. No, not going to do that. I like my Epson. Thank you very much. I'm sure the others are very nice, but I'm like, why would I go out and buy a new printer just because I saw that Bad Buddy advertisement? But anyway, moving on. So they're sitting on the beach drinking their beers, and Pat says, let's play a game. And he says, what do you want to do when you when you graduate, Pran? And he says, I would like to be an interior designer and a musician. And he says, what about you, Pat? And he says, well, I would like to 
run my father's business and listen to you play music. <laughs> and Prince like, I didn't ask you if you wanted to listen to me play music. Right. And so they have that little conversation. And then Pran asks Pran, what do you like about me? What do you find interesting about me? Pran. And this is the other reason I like the old dramas because they actually ask why the one person likes the other. You don't really hear that very often in rom-coms. They just don't bring that up. But anyway, um, Pran says, well, I like that you're a gangster. You are a gangster for good reasons. You always try to <clears throat> butt into people's problems and help them solve it. And I like that part of you, even though it's kind of annoying at times. And he says, what about you? What do you like about me? He says, well, I like that you're picky. You're picky about everything. And I also like that we have been through so much together as kids, as young adults. We both know difficulty. We both have had happiness together. And we've done so much in our lives together, even though basically we were born to be rivals. And that's what I like about you, Pran. And at this point, he says, and can I give you a kiss? And Pran's like, it's my turn, Pat. And he's like, I'm sorry, I just wanted to ask that. It's a nice time with the moon above us and our beers. <laughs> and it's at this point that Pran romantically um, kisses Pat because it was his turn, which I thought was kind of an interesting, one person put in the um, comments, he said, isn't it kind of funny that the first time <laughs> there was a passionate moment, it was Pat's turn. And this time it's Pran's turn. So anyway, but they have a romantical moment and then we cut to the next morning. I, I like Thai dramas. We cut a lot. Yeah, that works for us. Like we can watch this with the kitties if we just cut. But anyway, we go to the next morning. Um, Pat is completely conked because he is not a morning poor person. Pran is kind of conked. They kind of have a little chat about um, their evening together, if you will. And then, um, Pat wakes up and Pran is gone. I did like this scene, even though it is not entirely kid friendly with the discussion, I'll be the first to admit. But I did really like this scene because you got to see, Pran does not seem to, he does not very good at physically showing affection to those he cares about. But I love how in this scene, he's so very quietly, he's like, he in the morning he's like he's patting patch or giving him a kiss on his forehead and just like oh this is my puppy okay I guess this will be my puppy for life I better get used to the puppy because they don't have nong dolls so they have their arm over my chest and it's kind of heavy but it's okay because they're my puppy now okay so anyway I really liked that scene where that you just kind of see Pran quietly it's like I think when you're in really good relationships with people, it's like they help you to become more of who you already are. And in so doing, there is kind of a peace and assurance that you have because you know who you are as a person. Now, I do think that you need to be very fully aware of who you are before you're in a relationship. But my point is, is if you're in a good relationship, it's going to be one that helps you become more sure of yourself and more capable than if you were not in that relationship. I think that's one reason that Anna's like, you know, I really like having my friends. I really like having my acquaintances. I really like having my business colleagues, but I'm really not at this point in my life. It's like, it's not that I'm against a romantic relationship, but unless I had one where I really felt that that relationship helped them become a better person because I was there to have their back and they became a better person because and how she says I became a better person because they helped me be more confident in areas where I don't feel confident even though I am very capable and sometimes I sit there and second guess myself and that's not always a good thing but anyway unless I have that I'm like why would I you know it's like the thing I thought was interesting while watching this series is there were a lot of people in the comments that say, you know, this relationship and how it develops and the ability to make both characters better people because they were in the relationship rather than out of it 
is one reason that I will have my future spouse watch this series, even if they don't like BL, because they need to see, you know, kind of take notes, if it were. And I thought that's kind of an interesting look. I'm not sure. I'm like, but you know, the other thing is like, well, you know, whoever I'd end up with, they'd have to like be old because I'm not giving that up to be with someone. So yeah, just in a story on that deal. But anyway, moving on, or, you know, I'm like, I don't have a problem if they don't, you know, want to watch BLs all the time. I totally get that because it's not everyone's thing, but I'm like, they need to be okay with the fact that I might be binge watching a 12 hour series. And if they want to be with me during that time, they could grab a bowl of popcorn and watch with me and not be thinking that's totally weird. So anyway, uh, I should put that on my list. Must love Jane Austen and BL. Okay. <laughs> I don't have a list. But anyway, I've got way too many other things. It's like, I did order that. So I'm like, that is good. I got that on the grocery list yesterday. I'm like, I am not going into the new week without a reinforced boba and boba jelly, which are two different things, which are fabulous. But anyway, so Pat and Pran have that romantical moment. Um, when Pat wakes up, Pran is not in the bedroom and he is, you can tell he's got kind of separation anxiety. He's like, well, maybe Pran decided to go home after, you know, we had that romantic moment and he's left me here at the beach. And so you can tell Pran is kind of looking around the room. He's looking outside. He can't figure out where Pran, Pat cannot figure out where Pran is. Well, as he looks outside, he sees Pran is sitting there calmly playing guitar with his toes in the sand. And I love that picture of Pran because it's like, he is totally okay with who he is. He's okay playing guitar. He's okay being on the beach. He's even okay with his feet in the sand, which that's big for Pran. I'm like, the picky person actually kicked off his shoes and is playing guitar and having fun. So anyway, and I love how Pat's face lights up when he sees Pran just being himself, not worrying about anything. I think the thing that I like most about Pat liking Pran is that he likes when Pran is able to just be calm and be himself and be assured because Pran is constantly second guessing himself like perpetually. And so later on, Pran brings these shirts from the bar and says, these are what we're gonna wear, but I thought they looked nice, Pran. So let me, let me help you get this on. So he helps Pat get the shirt on and helps him button it up. And as he's buttoning the shirt up, Pran takes, uh, Pat takes Pran's hand and he says, I want to thank you because you like somebody like me who's silly and not maybe the best choice for you. <laughs> and also for the fact that no matter what difficulty I face, you face it with me. And I want to thank you for that. And I also want you to know that I realize that we do have to go home at some point. It's at this point that Pran, who's been trying to, you know, be happy and cheerful, kind of starts crying. And he says, it's okay. I know that we do have to go home at some point. So I think what we need to do is tell uncle so-and-so that we won't be working here, but we will be going home. And Pran's like, okay, okay. If you're okay with that, I would like to be able to go home. And so they pack up, they go home. Um, you see Pran on his side of the fence, getting ready to go in the gate, you see Pat, tears are streaming down Pat's face and he says, well, we're going home now, Pran. And Pran says, good luck, buddy. And that's how see episode 11 ends. I was like, okay, what happened to the whole, one man might not be able to change the world, but they can change themselves bits after this? I mean, no offense, it was like, what the, what the, what the, what the, what the? <laughs> I'm not going to say the word, but I'm going, what the, what the, yeah. And I had a lot of what the after that. I was like, um, I need more of a what? And to think something other than what the. But anyway, so at the end of the day, that's how episode 11 ends. We're going to go to episode 12. Four years later, four years have passed. Pat is waking up by himself. I think he still has long doll. He has one single toothbrush. His house is a much cleaner residence than it was when he was in college. And he's getting things on. He's going to talk to Corn and Y, who now work together, which is bloody hilarious. They go out to the curry restaurant that he went and would always text to make sure that they could go eat because then um, if if Pran was there, they couldn't go eat. Da, 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 da. So anyway, they go and 
kind of have a little bit of moment. And then he goes to their old dorm, which Pa is staying in. Ink is helping her pack up because Pa is now working for the film industry. She and Ink are still together. And he takes a picture of Pran's old dorm. So in the first part of episode 12, part one and part two, you kind of think that Pat is just not a part, or Pan is not a part of Pat's life. And um, he sees some tickets there for going to the reunion. Ink has an extra one, so he's going to maybe go to the high school reunion. You then kind of flash over to Pran, who is also getting ready in his own apartment in Singapore, um, working with a guy who I really don't know what country that accent came from, but the English was very strange. It was spoken. Um, Nanan spoke excellent pronounced English. I was like, Nanan has amazing English speaking skills. I had no idea. But um, the guy who was the architect friend who was trying to get um, Pran to go with him on a fake date so he could get some wine, he's like, would you please pretend to be my boyfriend so I can go to this place and get free wine? And, and Pran's like, you know, I think I'm busy tonight, but thank you for the offer so-and-so. So anyway, um, Pat goes to the high school reunion. He's looking at all these pictures of him and Pran playing guitar or being funny or whatever. And then he goes and sits at a table and he sees Pran come in and Pran looks at him across the room and then goes and sits at a table opposite him, like as far as you can get. And they don't talk throughout the entire time they're at the reunion. Um, Pran and him get to see pictures of them when they were kids and they're kind of reliving those memories of Pat being a total nimkampoop and Pran sitting there trying to be studious or whatever. And then, you know, giving each other the finger because they hate each other. <laughs> so anyway, they're both reliving those scenes because they play some photos and like, this was us, you know, how many years ago? At the end of the night, they play the song, Just Friend for everyone. Um, Pat's playing on the drums, Pran's on the guitar, and then they leave. Pran is on the steps. Um, Pat is trying to lug one of his friends who drank too much um, to his car so he can get him home. And they kind of look at each other, but that's it. And at that point, you kind of think they're not together as a couple, or they would be, you know, maybe a little more friendly, at least not, you know, sitting opposite tables of one another. So anyway, um, also during the high school reunion, they had a picture and Pat and Pran ended up in the middle together. Um, but again, no real emotion showing, no like, oh, you know, just like kind of complete and utter avoidance of one another. And you're going, okay. At the end of episode 12, part two or four, like five minutes before the end, I was sitting there going, I was mad at Pat. I have to admit, I mean, I should be equally mad at Pran maybe, but I was sitting there going, you know, Pram looks at things and goes, this is insurmountable. And that's the end of the story. Pat looks at things and go, we will find a way to solve this. And I'm going, Pat, you had four years to solve this. Pran is never going to probably be with anyone other than you. So you need to get yourself in gear and figure out how to solve this conundrum. And so by the, you know, before the last five minutes of episode 12, 204, I was like, I am really mad at Pat and he better really straighten this up. If this is what I think it is, if it's all a ruse, then I will totally get that. But I'm like, if this is not a ruse, I feel so bad for Pran that he cared for someone who really isn't really fighting for this at all. So anyway, then Pat is going to his house and he says, you know, I had a really good time at the, at the reunion. We got to meet people who I really hadn't seen since high school. Da, 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 da. He says, I'm sorry, there's someone at the door. And so he goes to the door and it's, Pran. And I'm going, I knew it would be Pran. I don't be where I was like, this is either going to be Pran mad as hell at Pat going to say, we are going to resolve this between you and I, or Pran, and this is a ruse, and they have just been pretending to not like each other. So anyway, Pran is at the door and Pat kind of swallows and he goes, I thought you were staying at your folks' house tonight. And he says, and Pran says, well, I really miss my friends, so I'm staying here tonight. And then Pat just grabs him and shoves him in the door. I'm going, the happy puppy is back. Okay, it was a ruse. So then we go to the next part of episode 12 where Pat and Pran are sitting there with Nong Doll. And um, Pran says, you know, you pretended not to know me for the whole, um, whole 
reunion and, and Pat says, well, someone told me I needed to pretend. Someone with dimples told me that. And he says, and you acted like you hated me. And Prince says, I do, I do hate you. And then he bops him with Nong Doll. And Pat says, you know, no one bops me with Nong Doll who hates me. And so anyway, he says, here, I want you to take you somewhere. And so he grabs um, Pran's hand and lugs him into the, um, I don't know, like a living room office, whatever. But it has the desk that was in their dorm with all the little lights with the smiley faces. And it has all the pictures of them for the last four years. And like the Singapore postcards they'd sent to one another. We then have Pran's monologue, as it were. I think it was, was it? Insomniac Preacher. Insomniac Preacher said, I really am looking forward to Pran's monologue in episode 12, where, you know, he's such a pent up person, basically. I mean, she did not say this. I'm kind of saying this. But anyway, and it's so funny to see him monologue about how much he likes Pat, even though he is so pent up, usually. So anyway, you have Pran looking, Pat looking at Pran saying, um, Pat looking at Pran looking at Pat saying, the one with fear size is Pat. And Pran looking, Pat looking at Pran going, and the one with dimples is Pran. And we were born to be rivals. And we decided that night when we came home from the beach, that our parents would never see eye to eye. And we couldn't change that. So what we did instead was we decided to tell everyone that we officially broke up. And then you see Pat in his house saying, we broke up and his mother patting him going, I'm so sorry, my son, it'll be okay. It'll be all right, you'll, you'll survive this. <laughs> and Pran is trying, our Pran is trying really hard not to smirk and laugh and go, I'll be fine, mom. I really will be okay. <laughs> and then Pran is in his house with his mother completely hugging him going, my son, you will meet someone so much better. It'll be all right if you need to grieve and eat and whatever. And Pran is going, I don't think I'll meet someone better, but if that makes you feel better, you know, whatever. And he's just saying, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so anyway, so you find out that they have been secretly seeing each other for four years, living together, except for the last two, um, Pran has been in Singapore working for an architecture firm, flying back on occasion. And the only people that really know that they're together are Ink and Pa and Corn and Y, because they did tell their best friends we're together, just everyone else thinks we're broke up. We then see that they told everyone at school they had broken up too. Um, we have them walking across the schoolyard. They quietly pinky grass and then leave. And then we see, it basically said we pretended to be enemies at school. And then we were back to being lovers. And I want a, I want a gif of Pat with his, I don't know, King size comfort over his head, marching across the hall from him in Paul's room into Pran's room. I don't know where I'm like, when I saw that, I was like, you know, opening the door and seeing Pran maybe almost fall at the couch, um, laughing, and seeing Pr Pat walking across the hall with this king size comfort. Room. Why are you calling the comforter across the hall? Pran has like a load of comforters in his room. I'm going, I don't understand the logic of Pat sometimes, but I'm like, it surely was amusing. And then we see that um, they say, you know, and after a few years, our families reconciled and it was all perfect. <laughs> And you hear them say, you know, that's a lovely thought, but sometimes things don't change. And we just decided we would quietly like each other and not care what they thought. And then you see, Pran is trying to shove Pat out of his room onto the rooftop. And Pran is looking at him going, you really are going to shove me off here while your mother is, you know, coming you know, home here shortly. And, and Pran said, please just go to your room, Pat. Okay, go, go. And you see him he's literally shoving his leg out the window. And I'm like, I want a meme of that too, because that is just bloody hilarious. So anyway, and I love how when, when Pat's character, the actor, um, is looking out the window, getting ready to be shoved out, he's like, you gotta be kidding me. You're shoving me out the window like this. And the the character who plays Pran, uh, the actor who plays Pran, Nanon, is sitting there going, yeah, I'm shoving you out the window like this because my mom is coming back here shortly. So anyway, that's where we then go to, um, what did I say? We go to, they end up going to a pub with 
Ink and Pa and Corn and Y, who run the pub that they used to break the tables at. At that point, they have a nice little chat and the architecture group and the engineering group from colleges are fighting. Corn goes and breaks them apart. And Pat yells over, you know, it's okay if you fight as long as you get a love for as amazing as I have. And Pran's like, no, don't fight to get a girlfriend or boyfriend because this guy is not that wonderful to be with. <laughs> and it's that point that they then go to the noodle shop and Pran orders four wonton soup instead of three. And Pat says, you ordered four wontons. He says, I will still eat my three, but I have this dog that tends to eat everything. So I'm going to give him the extra wonton. And then they have a chat about basically Pran and Pat. Pran is going to go visit his mom and dad. And he asks Pat to give his dad a bottle of imported alcohol that he brought back. He says, I think your dad will like it. He says, okay, I'll take it home to him. So the next day you have Pran at his door. Pat is his gate. And um, Pat says, let's go home. And Pran says, good luck, buddy. And Pat has a little bag of alcohol and he skips over. He says, wait just a minute before you go in. And he comes over and he kisses Pran over the cheek. He says, okay, I'm good now. And Pran says, Pat, your dad could see you. There is a CCTV camera here. Do we really want to do this right here in front of our house? And he says, I'm sorry, I needed to do that. I will go now. So the happy puppy darts off to his house and Pran darts off to his house. Um, Pran's mother serves mangoes with dip and they kind of have a nice combo. She then goes and gets the bed ready for Pran and she lays the guitar out, which she hated, but she knows her son loves. And um, Pran goes up to his room, starts playing guitar. Pat um, goes with his family. Ink and Pa are there too. The family got a lot calmer once Ink and Pa were a couple. And like, the family dynamic was a lot more subtle with that. But anyway, um, that night, pra, pra, Pat gives his dad the alcohol and says, my friend brought this back from abroad and he wanted you to have this. And Pat's dad doesn't drink the alcohol. I'm going, I wonder if Pat's dad knows that Pran and Pat are still a couple. And I'm like, I bet he does. And he's not happy. He's not happy about that, but he's not, you know, ready to lunge and, you know, half kill Pat or Pran like he was four years ago. So anyway, um, Pat goes up to his room. And as he's up in his room, he hears Pran playing the guitar. And he then finishes up his conversation on the phone with a client and he goes over on the rooftop and hurts his leg as he gets into Pran's room. And as he's doing that, he kind of yells out and Pat's dad is listening down below and he's like, huh. and his mom says, let the young ones just deal with this, it'll be okay. And then Pat comes in and sits on Pran's bed with him and they just play guitar. And, and Pat's actually singing. I'm going, why is he singing in Pran's house? Because Pran's mother can definitely hear him. And as he's singing, Pran's mother kind of sets up and goes, the child of the enemy is here. You can tell it's like, <laughs> and his dad is like, I really don't want the tiger of my wife to come unleashed, but I'm not sure what to do with this situation, even though I've been married to her for 20 some years. And then, they just kind of, Pat and Pran are just singing back and forth this song. And then you see Pran's mother just kind of calms back down and starts smiling and watching the TV. And his dad just starts laughing and she says, what, what are you laughing about? So and so, and he says, well, I think this show is very entertaining, honey. Come here, let me give you a shoulder pat. So basically, you know, both parents still are not in good standing with one another, but they have both kind of come to terms with the fact that their kids are not going to be breaking up even though they officially did four years ago. At the end of the day, Pran hops back to, or Pat hops back to his balcony and um, Pran hands throws the tin can that they used to listen with back to him and they, they chat back and forth and, Pran says, and Pat says, who is this? And he says, this is just a buddy because you won't call me your boyfriend. And he says, are you really just a buddy? And then we skip to, I love the end of this. I really do. We skip back to when they're like seven or eight years old and they're talking on the tin cans to one another. And I love that juxtaposition of them being adults, just kind of laughing and talking and having camaraderie. 
I mean, I think the thing that I like way better than their romantic relationship is they do have such a good camaraderie as a couple. I mean, they're way better friends than they are lovers, which if you're going to make it in a relationship, I think you really do have to be better friends than you are romantically inclined, as it were. And I really liked how we get to see how their friendship really started when they were kids. Not not like romantic, passionate thing, but like how that camaraderie from their childhood, they're still able to talk and laugh. And that relationship has developed into a healthy and mature relationship. And I love the end of that. Now we didn't have the credits. As some of you know, who decided to watch after the credits, we have that, I think it's P. Alm who directed this. He also did 1000 stars. There's always a little side note after the credits. The side note is usually not as kid friendly as some of you may know from like a thousand stars, just saying. It's not necessarily, I mean, it's PG-13 rated, yeah. But anyway, they are back at the apartment on the after the credit scene and they are playing a drinking game where whoever does not know the answer to something has to drink. And so Pran decides to really make Pat pay by asking him where he was born, what his zodiac sign was and something else I can't remember and Pat's like can we please play another game because you're going to make me get wasted and Pat says Pran says okay we'll play a game whoever um whoever when or Pat says we'll play a game whoever knows the correct answer has to be kissed on the cheek and Pat's like okay our friend's like okay what's my name Pat and Pat's like oh your name is Pran and he says and he says, I can do anything I want to you. <laughs> and Pat's like, well, this will be funny. And so he's like, okay, you got that answer correct. So what are you going to do, Pat? And then we have, as some of you know, Tilly Bird's one page was used for the promo back in 2020 when they made the first preview. And that song is a beautiful song. If you have not heard it, it really is just a lovely song. It's very sad because it's basically saying, I wish I could back, get back on the same page with you, but I don't think I ever will. I mean, it's about one of those relationships that is really just closing. You really can't move forward. And when they put that with this preview, I was really concerned because I was like, is this mean this is going to be rather depressing by the end of it? But anyway, we have a nice little subtle go back to that song because um, Pat says, is that a noise? And he says, you know, and he says, and he says, is someone at the door, Princess? And he says, no, no, I'm talking about there's a song. And he's like, um, Alm is humming, or Pat, Pat's Alm's character is humming the Tilly Bird song about, I wish we could get back on the same page. He, da, 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 da. okay, I'm not going to hum it because I'm terrible at humming and singing. I don't do that. But anyway, you all know what I'm talking about. If you've seen the original preview, I will drop a link to the song in the description because if you haven't heard it, you totally should. But anyway, it will might be reverberating through your brain for several days, though, full disclosure. So anyway, Pran is listening to song, but he turns back and Pat just kisses him for his face. He says, but that does not ever change. <laughs> and then Pran says, okay, now it's my turn. What's, what's your name? Um, now it's my turn, Pat says. He says, what's my name, Pran? And he says, your name is Pat. And he says, okay, what are you going to do to me? <laughs> and I probably should have found this not as funny as I did, but I'm sitting there going, it was funny. I mean, I don't mean it weird, but it was really funny. Yeah, I really do wish we had not had the thing about this is not a porno. I'm like, that should not have been included. But I think the fact that they were wrestling and being just bloody hilarious at the end of this <laughs> was really funny. But anyway, Pran then says, I want you to lie down. And Pat's going, how oh, dare in the open you want me to lie down? And what Pran does is he flips Pat over in a kung fu move and pins him to the ground with his arm behind his back. He says, you said that you wanted me to make you pay. And Pran's like, please, Pran, this is not how we need to end the scene. And Pran's like, okay, what are you going to call me? Says, I'm sorry. Okay, 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 okay. And so at the end of this, um, Pran gets up, runs out to the into the house to try to escape Pat attacking him. Pat comes in, attacks him, kisses him on both his cheeks because that was what their their game was. And then Pran, Pat or Pran 
pushes him on the bed, not like they're having a romantic moment, like I'm attacking you. And then he kisses him on his cheeks. And then they end up on the sofa wrestling and then in the kitchen wrestling and then the door closes. But it was not, I, I preferred the can scene with them chatting on the cans as kids and as adults as the end. But that was a very funny, like I'm going, I loved how Pat thought he was going to be romantical and he ended up getting pinned to the ground with his arm behind his back. I'm like, that, that was funny. I give this total series an absolute 10. It is the only Thai series I can say comes even close to it is Amwan into a Median, which came out in 2019. If you haven't seen it, you totally should. It's one of those that for people who don't like BL drama, I would highly recommend that you do watch Amwan and the We Best Love series, because I think those are the two that, I mean, they are BLs, but they're not really, I mean, they're, they're a lot different than other BLs. And I really think that we compartmentalize everything and put everything in boxes, and we really shouldn't do that on anything. It's a very bad decision. It makes things so much more closed. And there's so many lines that we need to, you know, maybe not have there. But anyway, Bad Buddy, second best Thai drama I have ever seen in my entire life. I mean, and I've watched a lot of Thai drama recently in the last two years, two and a half years, yeah. But anyway, it really, and the other thing I really liked about it is it really broke a bunch of BL stereotypes. I mean, we didn't have any of the, I'm keeping this as G-rated as possible, the role conversations that we have in some of the Thai dramas, where Shana sits there and goes, hmm, about. I mean, no offense. I'm like, and the also the whole one partner's thinking the other might be weaker than them in some way. We didn't have that. We had none of that in Bad Buddy. We didn't have the whole um, husband wife discussion. We didn't have any of that at all. I mean, we did have a bit of that because we had a comment where it was like, that's just weird. <laughs> we're both characters saying, you know, we're not having that conversation. We're not calling each other that. We're going to just be boyfriends. And that's the end of that. And I really liked how this BL series dealt with those things. This is one that, I mean, I would sit down and watch with my kids. I'd like, I think that with our kids, we need to be very, we need to be able to show them that relationships are come in different forms, they come in different shapes, they come in different, you know, all different things. And also to make sure that, you know, it's a show that I don't really have to skip a bunch of stuff with my kids. And we get to have conversations about like, what it's like to have emotional abuse, what it's like to deal with the fact that, you know, your parents, uh, whatever, might be crazy, but what, how do you deal with that? And hopefully, you know, they never have that with their kid mom. I'm like, I don't think I'm gonna be, you know, ever being a crazy parent. I might sit there and go, you know, I think this is maybe a bad decision, but you know, if this is what you wanna do, do it, but know that it could be, I don't know. But you know, I don't really think, you know, the whole, I think when you parent, you should, direct your kids or help, you know, guide them in the right direction, but you should never make demands of your children. And I think this show really helps show that what the cost can be for a whole family if you do parent poorly, what the cost can be for the kids, what the cost can be for everyone, and also how people process that abuse and get to a better place. I think the, the thing that I by the end of the show, by the end of episode 12, the thing that made me happiest of the characterizations was I love seeing Pran come into himself. I think the fact that Pran became the person that he was, he became the person who was like, you know what? My mom is never gonna be happy about Pat, but I really don't care. I'm staying with Pat because Pat helps me be a better human. So Pat is who I'm, I'm gonna be staying with the happy puppy because I said I'd be with the happy puppy. And if my mom doesn't like that, my mom can go fly a kite. And I'm not going to be bringing this up to my mom saying I'm being with Pat. I'm simply going to quietly live my life and maybe go have a vacation with the occasional mango with her, you know, when it works out. But I think, the fact that the characters didn't resolve all the conflicts, but they found workarounds the conflicts. That was maybe the best lesson of Bad Buddy. In addition to the fact that we 
really have the only couple I have ever seen on film. I think, you know, I was thinking about that this week where I have never seen a drama that every single step of the way, they surmount every problem together. It doesn't bring, the things that you think would bring them apart, that would rip them to shreds, actually make them stay together more. I mean, I'm sitting there going, that is rather impressive when you think about it. Because I, I was sitting there, I was going, I can't think of one rom-com, I can't think of one, I really can't, I have watched like truckloads of film from all over the world. I mean, I watch a lot of movies in my lifetime and a lot of different TV series. And I honestly can't think of one that the couple that was romantically inclined toward one another, when a problem was there that was huge, they stuck together. I mean, if you guys can think of one, please drop me a line at checkitroundtable at gmail.com. I remembered the email today. Yay. But anyway, but I was sitting there going, I really think that's the first one I've ever seen. And the other thing I thought was interesting in the comments is I've seen about maybe two to three of people who said, you know, I don't really, I haven't watched any BLs. It's not really something that I do. But this one is not like anything I've ever seen. I love, you know, basically the characterizations of people surmounting difficulty. It has nothing to do with it being a BL. And I'm like, thank you, random person. That's exactly, you know, kind of why I like BLs. It has nothing to do with, you know, them being a BL. But anyway, so I think that's kind of the thing about Bad Buddy is it really has defied all the stereotypes. I really can't say enough for the director, Piom. I'm sure he's not listening. He's got way better things to do, but he did a fabulous job. Huge shout out to him. Am and Nanon were amazing. They're only 21 guys and they did a phenomenal job as actors. I mean, just amazing. And also Nanon has a bunch of music. You can go check it out. It's quite fantastic too. So, I mean, I mean, he's rather the Renaissance man. He sings, he acts, you know, it's, yeah, anyway. But, um, so I can't really recommend this drama enough. It's one of those that's like this and I'm on, the kids will be watching because I think they teach very important lessons when, when you have difficulties, how do you deal with it? What kind of character traits do you want to end up with in life if you do have a partner? I don't care about what kind of partner you have. I'm saying as a partner, what kind of person do you want to end up with? And I have to say both, I mean, I, I was sitting there going, you know, I was written for both characters. I totally get Bran, but I totally admire Pat. It's like, they're so good and complimentary together. And I'm really hoping they do make a season two. I've heard that might be a possibility. I don't know if it will happen, but I'm hoping so. I also know that they're supposedly releasing two or three other series with Almond or Non. Um, I'm not really biding my time on that. Is I do like these actors, don't get me wrong, but uh, it's it's not bad, buddy. It, I mean, I might be surprised. I might sit there and go, oh, this is amazing. But right now I'm sitting there going, it's really hard to come next to Amwa. I'm just saying that's kind of like Anna's ultimate litmus test of, you know, film. It doesn't matter what genre. I'm like, Amwa's kind of like up there with Rob Nabana Di Jodi, except Amwa's a little better because it's full of more selfless actions and character development. But still, Rob Nabana Di Jodi, the Bollywood starring Shiru Khan is an amazing film. If you haven't seen it, it's worth totally three hours of a watch. But also, Amwa, it's like, well, that is like an amazing production. And then we have Bad Buddy. And I'm like, these are going on the shelf. If I could buy them in DVD, they would be there on the little shelf with like a little shrine saying, these are like amazing shows to watch. But do check it out. I will drop a link in the description. I compiled all the show episodes in a playlist. You can check it out. I'm also going to drop a link to my Bad Buddy soundtrack playlist. It has all the songs from the movie, plus a bunch of fan-made videos, which if you need a laugh, I think you'll like quite a few of them. I will say on the playlist, there are a couple of songs that do use a few expletives. So you might not want to watch those with the kiddies. It's not that I never use expletives, but the songs were very perfect for the characterizations they were portraying. So I'm like, I don't mind if there's a couple of expletives, but some people are, you know, more careful about that. So just for the kiddies, you might want to skip a couple of those songs, but I will drop the Bad Buddy playlist so that you have it for the 
episodes for the music videos and a link to, what was the other thing? I can't remember at this point in time. But anyway, there'll be those two links. And if I think of the third one, it will be there too. Surprise, check it at the round table. Bye.